Hello everyone, welcome back to Asturias in City Skylines. The main transportation hub in the center of the city is already looking pretty good after the first couple of episodes. It finally has some structures in some places around it, so it's starting to feel more and more complete. Although there's still a lot of work to be done. Today we won't continue the hub because I wanted to do something slightly different somewhere else. We will move to one of the rivers where one of the railways cross it and we will build a stacked bridge, railway station, new tram line, lots of nice looking buildings and a little park. Let's go. All right, and the motivation, the story behind this project today is, is kind of complicated. So at first I just wanted to build a second train station because I finally wanted to have some people use the main hub in the center of the city. They obviously won't if they have no destination to go to. And at the same time, I don't want to have the stations all that frequent in the city. So we need to move some distance away from the hub into this remote area right now and uh, do some kind of station in here. Now, this particular track is, is very suited for a station right here on the waterfront because it really cannot be anywhere else. Uh, closer to the downtown, it would be too close to the hub and over the river, it immediately goes into a tunnel. And uh, I'm probably not really going to expand the city all that much in that area anyway. And there's going to be a tram track down here. So, you know, a perfect opportunity for a transfer. So yeah, the motivation was the station so that I can finally have the people. Then I definitely needed to do the bridge because if I'm going to do a station right here, it's probably going to be partially connected to the bridge. And I really want to build some kind of an interesting looking bridge because we have a really great opportunity here. As you can see, we have that main road coming from the downtown in here very close to the tracks, but at a slightly different angle. So that's going to be a perfect opportunity to create uh, probably some kind of suspended bridge. I mean, I already built it, so I know it's going to be a suspended bridge or, you know, possibilities were kind of uh, endless in here. And also the two networks, they obviously have different levels, go on different levels, but they cross in the river. So that's also like very, very interesting thing. Yeah, so uh, the motivation was the station, then I had to definitely do the bridge. I definitely had to start doing some kind of waterfront, which is, uh, you know, nowhere else in the city because we started building in the mainland mostly. Then I had to define, uh, you know, all the rest of the areas around the waterfront. And I also need to do something about roads. Now, I'm not really sure if it was the previous episode. I think it was the previous episode, right, where I did that uh, or kind of indicated uh, one of the main roads that are probably going to originate from some kind of a highway ring around the city and go inside the city, all right? So I kind of indicated it that uh, in that episode with like a four-lane road or something that just goes in the center. Now, there are going to be more than that, obviously, more roads than that. And one of them is going to first follow the river in this particular place. But I really don't like it, even though I did build it in Aurelia, so that I just did like a waterfront, uh, some kind of a key, some kind of, you know, pedestrian infrastructure. Well, not really pedestrian infrastructure, actually. I just built a key and some kind of a main avenue right there, like next to each other. And I don't really like that too much because it kind of cuts the uh, rest of the city away from the waterfront. And there's just so many opportunities to build like pedestrian infrastructures, public transport infrastructures as well. So why just do this, right? Why build some kind of main avenues? like that. So I decided that uh, right underneath this uh, this bridge area at the start of it, we are going to have that main road kind of turn inland a bit more. And uh, it's going to go, it's all going to go into uh, what's going to be in the next episode, it's going to be like a like a little circle, maybe a roundabout, and with lots of skyscrapers all around it, uh, lots of like uh, colorful ads and all that uh, kind of stuff like a, you know, high density core of the city, like shopping or office center of the city, something like that. So it kind of feels fitting to put these uh, roads in there. It's obviously going to be highly vertical, so it's not really going to interfere with the pedestrian infrastructure and uh, all that. But I definitely uh, jump ahead with uh, this explanation. So let's just focus on what's going over here. So as you can see, like lots of different projects uh, suddenly just uh, started popping up in this place. And I really had to sort all of them because uh, we are doing some kind of a remote project away from the built areas. That always means that you need to do lots more planning because it's going to define all the rest of the projects around here. And especially bridges are very important projects because it's not like the city is going to have, you know, hundreds of them, like streets, but it's going to have... Uh, I don't know how many bridges we're going to build, like five maybe in the entire on the entire map, 
Uh, I mean, on the rivers, obviously, there are going to be more bridges, like in the in the city, around some valleys or something. But uh, these kinds of connections are obviously super important. And the starts and ends of these bridges, they need to have, uh, I don't know, some kind of intersections, some kind of uh, stations like this in here, or some kind of pedestrian, like squares or something. They need to be just interesting, right? So every time you decide to do a bridge, you just need to do all these connected projects to it. And a bridge is usually like a, like a fancy structure, you know, so it also makes sense to do some kind of fancy buildings around it so that it just kind of stands out and the entire area just feels great. So yeah, uh, deciding to build a bridge in city skylines or I suppose in real life as well kind of uh, makes, uh, makes sense or it means that uh, you have to do all the other things around it as well. So that's exactly what we are doing in here and that's why this project is so big. All right, so I think I introduced it, so let's uh, introduce it enough. So let's talk about the bridge itself. I definitely wanted to build a suspended bridge in here uh, because it kind of felt fitting to put pillars in between these uh, these networks and, uh, you know, do some kind of a cable. I wasn't exactly sure if I'm going to do a single cable too, or maybe even more, or maybe if I'm just going to go for something completely crazy. But then I decided to go for a more standard approach, let's say, and uh, do this a cable in here. This is already a bridge uh, structure from the workshop. The cable is already prepared with all these attachments. Uh, I just uh, created my own uh, pillars. I believe that the pillars are uh, one of the quad rioters like uh, walls or something. I downloaded them. I was thinking that I'm just going to use them in Aurelia uh, ages ago, but I eventually didn't. It kind of feels a bit too futuristic maybe for my taste or too cyberpunky maybe or something, but they definitely, you know, fill this purpose very well doing some kind of towers, like engineering towers for these kinds of structures. Then I also put like windows on the side of the pillars. It's just an, like a window extracted from some Mars building, I believe. And it's going to light up during the night. That's kind of interesting. And uh, it basically means that the pillar is supposed to be hollow so that uh, there's probably going to be some kind of, uh, I don't know, viewing area, restaurants maybe, or something like that. Now, uh, it was kind of complicated to get the attachments to the networks because at first I thought that I'm just going to use these attachments like symmetrically as they are now basically, but they are going to go all the way down to the networks and just attach to the sidewalk on the road and the side of the railway. Uh, it was a bit of a problem for the railway because it was interfering with the with the outermost uh, tracks, of course. The trains just would not fit under them. So I needed to have some kind of like a higher, slightly higher point of attachment then I definitely couldn't afford to put the cables uh, to both of the networks in the center where they overlapped because they were, you know, too wide for that. So I decided to create these like frames and uh, I was thinking of maybe using the letter O or number zero for procedural objects, but then I decided to just use these Nardos uh, rings for the flying train because I already worked with them and I know that they can be like uh, disconnected and you can actually create these uh, open shapes with them. I eventually didn't need that. Well, I kind of did for that attachment point, like a little bob there on the top of those rings, but uh, the rings I kind of kept the same. I just stretched them a bit, right? so that they are forming these frames like ribs that are obviously attached to directly to the cables or to the tensions from the main cable and uh, they are just holding both of the networks so the railway is going on top of them and uh, the road uh, below them and eventually it turned out looking really good i really like these like complicated looking uh, structures in city skylines especially if you like put them together yourself obviously that's the most satisfying part that's uh, something i'm really going to be continuing with in the future because uh, i just really like it it's, it's obviously just a decoration it serves no purpose for the gameplay but i love it i absolutely love doing this so yeah expect expect more of this so it's a suspended bridge, which means that it needs to have some kind of, uh, you know, opposite attachment on the mainland for the cable. Uh, usually, although it's not like, uh, you know, every time you have these uh, kinds of cables also uh, serve as uh, support for that shorter part of the bridge uh, before it goes completely to the mainland. But in this particular case, I just decided that the uh, second part of the cable is just uh, going to go to that anchor point directly without attaching to anything. I was thinking of maybe putting some kind of like lamps hanging from it. I have these like hollow lamps 
uh, like, you know, these like uh, Asian types of lamps, but uh, it kind of felt out of place. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to use them somewhere else in the city because it's one of those detailing things that you can only use once, right? Otherwise, it's going to start being a bit too repetitive. So I'm definitely trying to uh, save it for later, even though, you know, I'm most probably not going to use it at all because, you know, that's just how it is with these kinds of unique detailing uh, things, elements, because you're just going to keep them in store and um, then you're just not going to use them because you're not going to think that the places are worth it. But hopefully I will not forget to use them because they look really, really good. But anyway, I digress. So what's happening in this area? So uh, yeah, let's, more, let's talk more about the key and the area on the waterfront. So this key is the Shanghai key. You are easily going to find it if you type that in the workshop. It's looking really good. I'm kind of against doing these like uh, very long keys, just basically lining the the bodies of water on the entire map with keys. I don't really like that. I did that in Aurelia. It was not looking that great. I eventually decided to end it and do some more natural waterfronts. In Asturias, I definitely am going to do that uh, closer to the center. Kind of feels fitting. And especially with this particular key, it's looking really, really good. So I don't really mind it that it's, uh, it's a bit too long. And uh, don't worry, I'm definitely going to later uh, going to detail with like rocks and things like that. So it's not going to be absolutely everywhere. But in this particular case, it's really, really fitting, especially underneath these bridges. So right next to it, there is that uh, white uh, stone pedestrian road, which is only going to have pedestrians. So that's kind of what I really wanted to do, make the waterfront, uh, you know, pedestrian only. Then we have the trams, the LRT tracks for the, for the, for the tram line in there and uh, that's on the same level as the key as the pedestrian infrastructure and there's going to be a stop for the trams uh, directly below the start of the bridge so there's going to be an easy transfer with elevators on top to the to the train platform and to the rest of the area as well so what's next so then we have that main road but the main road is already one level above the waterfront level i really wanted to do that because i wanted to experiment with different levels and i especially wanted to have another opportunity to use uh, use some more of those, I believe they are made by Ronix, although I'm not really sure, those retaining walls. They are looking so good. They have uh, some vegetation on the sides of them. They just feel absolutely perfect for, uh, for Asturias, for like a tropical build, although they can be just placed anywhere. They are just looking good, absolutely, uh, with any opportunity, right? But I really wanted to place them in here, and it's going to give me an opportunity to obviously connect these different levels. For example, with stairs, elevators obviously i kind of like stairs more in city skylines because you know elevators is just you see the pedestrians go in and out on the top but you know you don't really see the movement obviously the movement is just kind of weird inside it's, it's not really an elevator so i really like stairs a lot more and uh, they're actually kind of more satisfying to build not gonna lie especially when you then going to see the results how people use them so these little uh, tiny little connections like i do here this uh, corner on the intersection is just looking really really good i love it especially it's actually going to be very busy because it's going to be one of the main connections, at least for now, uh, to reach that uh, bottom level for that uh, tram stop, right? So the next thing I needed to start doing in here were buildings. So I, for example, started with these residential buildings. And immediately when I did this, I just realized that this is something that is going to need a lot more attention. So I wanted to do some kind of a residential development that is kind of going to look like it starts from that main road. But there are like these office buildings, there's going to be a line of these office buildings, and the actual residential buildings are built on the top. And um, the terrain just goes up so that these office buildings are basically going to disappear in the slope eventually. And on the opposite side, you're just going to have those residential buildings. I kind of like this style. I think I would like to do that somewhere else in the city. To be perfectly honest, I wanted to do Asturias a lot more like um, uneven with the terrain. It's obviously going to be vertical with like these urban, you know, things that I'm going to do. But I definitely wanted to play a lot more with... Uh, with verticality in terms of terrain. But uh, eventually I just made the map kind of flat in these places. So you're definitely going to see me do a lot of terraforming, a lot of landscaping, just do like little hills so that we can really force these elevation changes even in um, closer to the center of the city. It's just something that I really, really want to, want to do, all right? 
So what's next? So the buildings. Yeah, so not only residential buildings are in here. I obviously also did some offices. I had to do a lot of procedural objects to really customize the buildings right next to the train station because obviously the shapes there are like highly unique. I'm never going to find an already made building to, to fit there with like heights and everything. So there's, for example, an office building, office block directly below the station, which is also forming like a support of the train station and it's on the side of the tram station below. It uh, exactly makes way for that uh, street that is running below the station as you can see. And uh, oh, I haven't built it yet. Oh, I was talking about something, but I haven't built it yet in the time lapse. There's like a placeholder building in there. But yeah, this is the one that I was talking about. This particular building, I just used a couple of instances of it and uh, did exactly what I was saying. There's also a procedural object version on that other side of the station, that slightly curved one, which uh, again just fits that shape of the station really, really well. All, as you can see, I'm making these stations highly customized, so I can just place whatever buildings around them and I can fit these green surfaces, uh, you know, as I need them. That's kind of the reason why I really like doing these custom train stations, especially these urban train stations, because I really don't want to do the station as just a line, you know, standard looking line, just a platform and some access points. I really want to do them as these um, open plazas even or something like that, because I'm definitely preparing for the future of Asturias because from Aurelia, I definitely know 100% that people are going to use public transport a lot and huge crowds of people are going to be walking on these open surfaces. So I'm already preparing for that in advance and I'm making sure that these open surfaces are huge because it's just going to look so much better when all the people are going to kind of disperse into the surfaces. I obviously need to force them. I need to make uh, different pedestrian paths, invisible ones, need to make use of the different sizes of the pedestrian paths and so on and so on. So this is probably going to be like a continuous work that we are going to be uh, just uh, doing uh, throughout the series. I'm probably going to be returning to some of these places, uh, you know, upgrading the pedestrian infrastructure as we get more and more population in the city. Right now, the population is, what is that, almost 4K. I think I have close to 10K at this point when I'm uh, building as tourists and uh, it's already like really crowded. Some tram stops, especially in the city, are just so busy. So it's definitely a good decision right from the start to do these uh, to do these places uh, huge, do these open spaces really, really big. All right, so I'm obviously using that green space again. Uh, when I'm making this commentary, the uh, this train station and the tram hub videos are already out, and a couple of people, you know, didn't really like these uh, green uh, paths, these green open areas. I really like them. I talked about it in that first train station episode that it's just a nice contrast to some of the things that I'm building in the city. It just brings in a different color. I definitely would not want to have it gray or some kind of uh, just pavement or asphalt or something. This kind of feels nice. Yeah, sure, it's like a bright color. It's not realistic. Yeah, it's not. But, you know, we built a space elevator, so come on. I'm not exactly trying to build like a photorealistic city in here, am I? Now, speaking of colors, I'm definitely trying to pay attention to the colors of buildings. So at first I placed a couple of just standard buildings and I was really unhappy with them because it started to look like Aurelia again, all the kind of bright grayish looking buildings and it was just not good. So I, for example, recolored those uh, office buildings that are just very generic looking. So I just placed them a couple of times here and there to fill in some places. In some places I made them blue or green or something. In some places I made them like bright red because why not? It's just going to look nice. And uh, later I also I also uh, toned down some of the some of the other blocks because they were just too bright. Made them darker. I definitely want to have buildings uh, a lot more darker compared to Aurelia, for example, because the colors are just going to stand out a lot more when uh, when other mundane buildings around them are kind of uh, darker, right? I'm not really sure, I'm not an expert, but that's just kind of how I see it and how I like it. So that's how I build it. That's uh, all the reasons that I need, really. So, as I explained in uh, in the previous episodes, I think I'm, I talked about it in, uh, you know, many times before, I definitely try to do these green surfaces so that they are going to be connected throughout the city. Especially in the next episode, I'm going to show you building. Uh, we are really going to 
uh, overdo it a lot with these green surfaces, maybe a tiny bit too much by just uh, doing it on multiple levels and doing huge, uh, you know, areas of them. But in here, it's like a kind of a little indication of what I would like to do in the rest of the rest of the high density parts of the city. Obviously not going to do like these uh, skyways in the suburbs or something that would look a bit bizarre. But uh, in these kinds of places where you do have different levels already for pedestrians, it really makes sense to make these kinds of more uh, convenient ways for people to just reach different places. So for example, I did that little bridge into that uh, residential block from this station, very convenient connection. Then I also connected the station on the other side into like general area of the downtown because there are going to be some shops, offices. So people can just, uh, you know, walk there. They don't have to go directly to the street level at the station and just cross many different intersections to get to their destination that might be just a couple of hundred meters away, right? So they can easily just walk directly into their building on these kinds of skyways. So it only feels appropriate. And like I said, I really like that green color, especially now that it's in many different places in the city and uh, I have it just uniform in the, in the different places of the city. So like I said, again, many times before, if you're going to zoom out and you're going to see this green color, then um, it's immediately going to tell you that there is the pedestrian infrastructure. So definitely going to continue with that. I realize that a lot of people don't don't like it. It's just something, you know, completely uh, strange. But um, I'm, I'm really, really standing behind this decision here. All right. So when it comes to detailing, I'm uh, definitely going to try to incorporate some of these trees in here because with that stadium, uh, with that stadium park, you know, it was just a, like a little small park, but uh, these kinds of small parks, I want to do them in the city very frequently because the combination of, uh, I don't know, the colors of the city, the buildings, all the styles, it just fits so well with the palm trees, with the exotic trees and especially rocks. Uh, rocks are just looking so good. It's probably the colors as well, obviously, with the rocks and it's just so satisfying to do these particular areas. And when you combine these parks with nice looking buildings, like for example, that uh, Marconok building right there, that slightly curved one that I also placed in Aurelia on the waterfront, it's like a building that needs to be placed on the waterfront. It's like a shape of the wave, maybe, if you think about it. So it just looks great. And this particular place in front of like a park with palm trees, it's just a perfect combination, so I really couldn't help it. I had to build some kind of a park like that. At, at, it's just a you know good fit. Like park is always nice to have, right? Maybe not so in like super high density core of the city, but maybe even there, there might be some places where they are going to feel fitting. All right. So the rest of the detailing, I don't really want to overdo it uh, too much. It ties to the fact that I explained before. These places are going to be very crowded. So I don't want to just block the spaces right at this point by just placing some kind of, uh, I don't know, planters on top of the station, on top of the platforms or, I don't know, all kinds of little clutter all around these areas. So I'm just using uh, the yellow benches. Again, same benches that I used with the stadium, for example. I really like this, like, uh, unifying of, uh, of the details. I, I don't know why, but I just really like uh, having the same things ar around the city. It's just kind of feeling like uh, the city is kind of tied together. It has some kind of a plan or something. I don't know. I just really like doing that. And... Uh, Obviously, doing uh, lots of pedestrian paths. Now, uh, just so I finish the, the detailing talk, I also, I'm also going to do lots of uh, lights all around the area, but I'm going to try to, uh, you know, limit that into like the places between the benches. And if I really have to, then in the open areas, but really trying to make it so that it's not going to clutter the space too much and obstruct uh, the, the paths. Now, when it comes to the pedestrian paths, uh, this place was actually super complicated with them. Uh, maybe even more complicated uh, compared to, for example, the, the small scale pedestrian connections that I did at the main hub. Because in this place, I had to do it completely. At the hub, it's not yet complete. That kind of ties to the reason why I'm even doing this project. So I can finally have people use the main hub and I can even test it to see how it performs. But this place is going to be complete, is going to be functional. We already have people in here, as you can see. So I need to provide all those little connections. 
Now, this is the light work that I was uh, talking about. Uh, these are the same lights that I used in the center, although I'm not exactly all satisfied with them because they have the light source shine into, into the side quite a lot. So it illuminates the buildings in front of it kind of more than the surface below it, which is slightly strange, especially in these kinds of places. Now, in this place, I really wanted to also try experimenting with colors. Uh, in the previous episode, I did a couple of those holographic ads in, I think I did like two or something. I really didn't want to overdo it, but I'm kind of slightly, slowly uh, being pushed... Uh, you know, into the direction of just using these a lot more because I really like them. I really, really like them. And in Aurelia, I did not do uh, night shots at all. I did not care about how the city looks during the night. In Asturias, when I started doing these kinds of night, uh, night detailings, then I really, really started liking uh, doing these kinds of lights and playing around with different colors of lights and different ads and just, you know, making sure that the city looks okay. So I even did uh, that, uh, you know, I lined the main cable of the bridge with those uh, green colors. Yeah, sure, it's like a super bright color. It's going to look like a amusement park, but I just like it. I really like looking at it, how it looks. I definitely want to have Asturias very, very bright and colorful during the night. That's just how it's going to be. All right, so this is the night, uh, this is the day shot, of course. You can also see that I did a couple of switches. By the way, this was the episode where I figured out that technique for doing the, uh, doing the good looking S shaped uh, switches for the trains. So I finally put them in here. Obviously, we have four tracks on the station so that the urban uh, service is going to use the outer tracks. Right now, they also use the switches to go inside, but it doesn't matter. The platforms are on the outer side. And uh, it's just a preparation if I'm ever going to decide to have like intercity trains or maybe cargo is going to go through here as well, then it can just bypass the station, doesn't need to wait for the urban service. Now also, as you can see, I decided to fill those wedges on the bridge with grass on the top surface and pavement on the bottom surface. It's empty right now. I'm probably going to return to it when we do the other side of the, of the waterfront because right now I don't really uh, see any kind of uh, purpose for those. I'm probably thinking that the grass part is going to be like a chill area. I'm going to allow people to go there. I will have to figure out how to do that. But uh, the bottom part, I'm not really all that sure of right now. This little corner, I'm super satisfied with. That's the stair area, like I said. Look at that. There's the guy going to the tram, tram station. Unfortunately, we just don't have that many cars. So we don't really have these intersections working. Oh, yeah, by the way, I decided that from now on, on the main roads, I'm also going to use that grid pattern inside the intersection with the intersection marking tools. Again, it's just a different color that uh, just kind of brightens up that area because otherwise it would be just a huge black uh, black hole in that intersection and it wouldn't look all that great. And these are just looking absolutely fine. And we didn't really have that many uh, yellow colors in, um, in these kinds of places anyway. So that residential area that you see on the left, that's going to be unfinished because it really is going to require a lot more work. And uh, I was also thinking that this project is more than enough for today. But anyway, in the next episode, we are going to move into that uh, more center centralized area where we are going to do lots of high density, lots of verticality, lots of colors. So definitely stay tuned for that. Anyway, that is going to be all for today's episode. Thank you for watching it. If you liked it, then you can do the usual to help the channel, help the video reach more people. So that is leaving a thumbs up, leaving a comment, sharing the video, subscribing to the channel if you're new here. And if you want to directly support the channel, you can become a channel member through the join button below or the link in the description. Big thanks to all the supporters that we currently have. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. That is all. Take care and goodbye.